Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a problem with God. The problem is that He is invisible, He is almighty, He is inscrutable. Okay, that's three problems with God, but you know what I mean. He is almighty. He can do whatever He wants to do with us. He can raise us up. He can knock us down. He can make us live. He can make us die. He can save us. He can damn us. He can annihilate us. He is almighty. God can do anything He wants to do with us. God is also inscrutable and invisible. There is no way to tell by looking to determine what God is going to do. There is no scientific test to perform to learn something about God. What is His nature? What is He like? What is His attitude? Most importantly, what is His attitude toward us? And individually, what is His attitude towards me? Like I told the children, when you look at your parents, you can tell what their attitude is towards you by the expression on their face, by the things that they say. You cannot see the expression on God's face. We have a problem with God. And the problem is further compounded by human beings. You know, there are a bunch of human beings out there, they call themselves Christians. They will be happy to tell you everything there is to know about God. But then there's this other group of people out there called Muslims. And they go running around and they won't be happy to tell you everything there is to know about God. And then there's this other group of people called Jews. They claim to have a long history with God and they will be happy to tell you everything there is to know about God. And the problem is the three groups are not saying the same thing. In fact, the three groups deny the claims of the other groups. They say not only that they are right, but the other groups are wrong. How is a person supposed to decide who is right and who is wrong when they cannot possibly all be right? And to make the problem even worse, Christians are not a monolithic organization. They are further subdivided into smaller categories. You've got your Eastern Orthodox, you've got your Roman Catholics, you got your Protestants, and us wild Protestants are further subdivided into even smaller categories. Some of us have millions of members, and some of us have only 50 or 100, and we all say we're right, we all say the rest of them are wrong. And then the Muslims, they're no better, they're further divided into subcategories. You got your Shiite Muslims, and your Sunni Muslims, and other smaller Muslim groups all claiming that they're telling you about the one true God, and in Judaism, you got your Reformed Jews, your Conservative Jews, and your Orthodox Jews, and your Hasidic Jews, all of them claiming that they know everything there is to know about the one true God and deny the claims of the others. Now, how are you supposed to tell who's right, who's wrong? How are you supposed to decide who the one true God is when it seems like everybody has an opinion or an idea or a confession or a tradition about God? And then there are the Hindus. God bless those people. You are all right. In fact, there are many gods, and whatever god it is, you, it is that you have, it is part of our pantheon of gods. And then at the other extreme, you got the atheist. There isn't any god. And atheists are a fascinating bunch of people. For a bunch of people who deny that there's a god, they're obsessed with proving it. In fact, one atheist admitted he was so obsessed with God that he wanted it on his tombstone, thank God I died an atheist. <laughs> now what are you supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? How is anybody ever supposed to determine anything when everybody goes around saying all these different things about God? And then there are these happy people. Now, that's quite a pejorative term. I just sit in the pulpit today. <laughs> there are folks who say, let's put it this way, there are folks who say that everybody is entitled to their own opinion about God and nobody is permitted to condemn somebody else's opinion or thoughts about God. 
Oh, really? I asked one of these folks one time, so what Osama bin Laden says about God, you think that's okay? Or at least you think it's okay for him to hold that opinion? And her answer was, Osama bin Laden does not represent Islam appropriately. And I said, that's not what I'm saying. Regardless of what his connection is to Islam, he claims to be speaking for God. Is what he says about God right? Or as one woman said, well, we're all trying to get to the same place. So is Osama bin Laden. Is the way he gets to it right? And if you say that it is wrong, you are admitting that there is a standard of measurement by which we determine what is of God and what is not. And that raises the issue of what is the standard of what is of God and what is not. Here's the answer, folks. You wait on the answer. Here it is. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is risen from the dead. All the fullness of deity dwells bodily in him. All the fullness of deity dwells bodily in him. God has become a human being. And he goes walking around and talking. You want to know what God is like? Ask him. There he is. He rises from the dead to confirm his word. And his word is that all the fullness of the deity dwells bodily in him. You want to know what you must do in order to inherit eternal life? Just ask Jesus. He will be happy to tell you. You want to know what the greatest commandment is? Just ask Jesus. He will be happy to tell you, and he will also tell you the one that is like it. You want to know who your neighbor is? Ask Jesus. He will be happy to tell you who your neighbor is. He will even answer obscure questions. You want to know what happens to married people at the resurrection? Just ask Jesus. He'll tell you. You want to know about marriage and divorce? Just ask Jesus. He'll tell you. You want to know about whether or not you should pay taxes to the government? Just ask Jesus. He'll tell you. Jesus covers every subject from death to taxes. You want to know about God? There he is. Telling you everything you need to know about him. All the fullness of the deity dwells in him bodily. That means there is nothing of God that he lacks. So the issue, people, is not which group of human beings you belong to. The issue is, are you with Jesus or not? For all the fullness of deity dwells in him bodily. I know I just lost the sound. I'll try and project. <laughs> okay, now, if all the fullness of deity dwells in Jesus bodily, then he is your fullness. And he reigns over every authority, every principality, and over every power. Jesus reigns over every judge and over every Congress. He reigns over every parliament and every president. He reigns over every king, every tyrant, every dictator, terrorist. He reigns over them all. He decides when they have power. He decides when they don't have power. He decides when they come into power and he decides when they leave. And if Jesus reigns over these things, then our Lord also reigns over all of the angels, over all of the demons, and over Satan himself. And this deity who dwells bodily has circumcised you with a circumcision not done by hands. He has cut away the body of your flesh. That is to say, he has cut away your desire for sin and death. He has cut it away in baptism and he has taken it away from you. You were baptized into his death. The old you has died. And the old you is the you that desires sin and death. He has cut that away, and he has taken it away. For you and I to desire sin is like a freed man to desire.
desire to be slavery again. It is like an Israelite in the wilderness wanting to go back to Egypt. It is like Lazarus wanting to go back into the tomb. It is like people who live with God saying, we don't want to live with you anymore. He has cut the body of your flesh away. Why on earth would you want to take it up again? He has taken your sins away. Why would you want to take it up again? He has taken your death away. Why would you want to take it up again? He did this when he baptized you. And so not only has our Lord Jesus Christ put your old self to death, he has also raised you from the dead a new person. He has raised you from the dead by the power of God which works in your faith. He raised you from the dead when he forgave you of all of your sins. And how did our Lord forgive you of all of your trespasses? Oh, my sound is better. See, this is an important part of the sermon. <laughs> Jesus. 